Hello. What's up, YouTube? My name's Quickie. Welcome back to the channel. Um, trying to get to the bottom of this, like not running right and being all lumpy and horrible and stuff. Um, so the problem we've got is on cylinder two. It's just not firing. We know that because we've had it running, pulled the spark plug lead off, and it's still doing exactly the same thing. Um, we tried switching everything about as you would have seen in the last one. Um, and and we know the problem is there and even with it disconnected the engine note doesn't change so it does sort of indicate fueling um, which is weird because most of the time it's not running right it's going to be an electrical thing but in this case it, it, it sounds like it's going to be a fueling issue um, I had a chat with Andy um, sort of yesterday so that would be the Thursday um, saying do, because I, I was just intrigued actually, I wanted to know do coils break down and fail through not being used? Um, yeah, there's no fluid or anything going through it, it's a static thing and it's not going through heat cycles, it's just sitting there. Um, and he said basically no they don't, however you can have things like, you know, a crack in the winding or the HT lead or something like that that as it gets hot and you get all the vibration, then that gap opens up and that's when you get the problem. That isn't what was happening on this one. This would do it from cold. Um, you know, you fire it up and cylinder two just won't working right. It's not firing. Um, so I don't think that to be the case. There was one time I thought it was running on all four, but I've gone back and looked at the footage and it wasn't. There was that burble there to it. So you know, we've, we've essentially proved the coils and the spark plugs and just by switching it all around with the other stuff that's on there, we've still got the problem. So it does tend to indicate it's a fueling thing. Um, I'm going to meter the, the coils and stuff anyway because you can check the primary and secondary windings. But for now, I just want to know if there's any fuel in the float bowl for carb number two. Because if they're in, you know, don't, why aren't you fitting? You should fit. Are you not going to fit? Oh, you're a stupid size one. Oh no, here we go. Right. Is there any fuel in the float bowl? Yes, there is. Yes, there is. Hmm. That's interesting. That is number two, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> right, okay then. Well, I'm just going to go through and drain all the... I was hoping that that was going to be dry because that would sort of indicate a problem with the float um, so it's not getting any fuel coming through. Um, but that doesn't seem to be the case. So I'm going to go ahead and get all this lot drained. Then we'll upend it and have it apart and see if we can't see what's going on. Bugger, I was really hoping that was going to be it. <laughs> <laughs>
right, so I've run him all apart. Um, just use car cleaner, squirted it through all the emulsion tubes and make sure like all these little tiny holes and stuff is, you know, this is like spraying out of it and stuff. All the jets and everything else look fine. There was a couple of little bits of, you know, specks of stuff in the bottom of the float bowl, which could have come through from the, um, the tank. Um, the only bit I've not been able to get out is there's um, this piece here, that bit, Oh, where are you? Can you see? That bit there, that brass thing. Um, basically, that comes in off the main fuel rail. Um, and that's the uh, float needle seat. Um, it's held in place with an O-ring. And there is a, a, like a, a mesh filter on the other side of it. Ideally, I wanted to take that out and give it a clean. Just, you know, just make sure it's clean. Um, but it's brass. And he's in there with an O-ring. And he don't want to come out. And I haven't got another one. So I don't want to deform that at all or mar it up and sort of like hamper the way that this little needle moves up and down. So that's the only bit I haven't took out. But I've blown out all the galleries, all the galleries and stuff and make sure it's all, you know, connected, square air in one end and it comes out the other and blah, blah, blah. Clean as a whistle in there now. Um, there was a tiny bit of muck, but really nothing to speak of. So, um, you know, I've checked the diaphragm, there's no cracks or anything in that. Um, the float's not leaking. The needle's all nice and clean. I was hoping to find something in here. I really was. Um, I think what I'm going to do is put this back together again. I'm going to check my float heights and whatnot, obviously. Um, stick it all back together again, then I'm going to meter those coils because there isn't anything obvious. There is nothing obvious about this. Right, let's, um, let's put him back together. height 13 mil plus or minus two okay so for the float height um, essentially with the airbox side facing up the idea is is that you tilt this and you, you'll be able to see that the, the floats wobble about the idea is is that you tilt it back until it just hits its seat yeah the needle just hits its seat and it stops wiggling about there, like that. Then with a vernier, you measure from this gasket face to the top of the float. Oh, come on. Uh, right there. So from that face, Top of the float, we've got 13.2, so pretty much spot on. Certainly within their specs anyway, so I'm going to call that done. Button this up, and then I'm going to have a look at those uh, coils and measure them, I think. Because I haven't found anything really, not anything in this that is going, yeah, this is wrong, this is bugged up. I mean, there could have been some sludge in there, I don't really know. But, if there was, then it's nothing obvious. Is there a thing on there? Yes.
Right, I've just given these little spade connectors a bit of a clean because they were just black. <laughs> they was horrible. Um, so were the mounting surfaces as well, which should be metal on metal. Um, so according to the book of words, um, no, you want to be on ohms. There we go. So across the primary windings, we're looking for 2.3 to 3.5. So, go one on there. I don't know if you can see this. One on there. 3.9. Well, he's a bit high then. Oh, 3.8. <laughs> is it because I'm measuring through goo? I don't think so, I mean they are quite clean. They weren't, but they are now. See now says 4.1. 4.1. And the upper limit is 3.5 which is weird because like cylinder 3 was running quite happy but I don't know it could be had it on um, ASBO in where the, the coils were breaking down and it seemed to be with heat and vibration it ended up swapping the coils out and it was all fine maybe that is the problem because I honestly didn't find that much wrong with the car there was fuel in it everything was adjusted right the float level was okay there was a little bit of you know, in the fuel in there, it was a little bit grubby, but the fuel we're getting these days just turns carbs to smush. I wonder if that's what it is. Mm, what's the other end supposed to be? Um, 12 to 18 kilo ohms. All right, set you on 20. Oh, I don't think we've I don't think these are going to get in there. Come on. No, it's not touching. Um, well, just because it's reading something it shouldn't be, even though it was working on the number three cylinder quite happily, I think I probably need to change calls. And if I'm changing one, I'll probably just change both of them because if there is a problem with that one, then the other one's probably not far behind. Um, right, let me do some Googling. Right then, they don't make these anymore. Not as new anyway. <laughs> awesome. Um, right, so I'll give uh, Jan from JP Motorcycles, give him a call just to see if he's got any. We had a little bit of a yap and whatnot. Um, fortunately, he hasn't got any. So um, because you can't get them direct from you know, Fowlers or anywhere like that again. I've gone on Fleet Bait and I found some and they're on their way. They're gonna be here 28th of June. So basically next week. Yeah, four days time. Um, so when they get here, they can go on and we should be sound. Um, I have gone through and cleaned out the rest of the carbs as well. There was a little bit of stuff in the bottom of the float bowls. Um, it's not sludge. See, well, when I de-rusted the tank and you do it with a citric acid thing, you get like this grey layer of, it's obviously like an oxide or something like that, and that's what you pressure wash off and everything else. But it's so hard to clean that tank out completely because there's, there's this bugger all holes in it, basically. So I'm sure there's something in the tank that is coming through, but it's nothing massive, nothing massive. And I've gone through and checked all of them. All the float heights are okay. You know, I've just given them a clean, basically, blown out all the emulsion tubes with uh, carb cleaner, so they're all good and gold. Um, but like I say, there was a little bit of something in there. Um, get some new coils on there as well, even though this was working on cylinder three, it's not measuring as it should do. So I'm just changing them anyway with these other ones that are coming through, so that's fine. Uh, the thing is, I would be taking the bike off the road at this point anyway because in like 70 miles, all this lot would have to come off just so I can get to the head to re-torque it. Because all this stuff was in the way, so it was coming off anyway. This isn't, you know, it's not a biggie. 
Um, but it just means I've got some other stuff that I need to fix. Um, so what we're going to be doing tomorrow is I'm going to dump the oil um, and I'm going to retalk the head and it's going to have you know fresh oil and filter and everything else but I want to take the sump off because I want to have a look at the gearbox and I also want to take that side cover off and have a look at the external bits to it because um, I, you know, I haven't got a fifth gear on this bike and it is annoying, I mean you can ride around it, it's not a problem but you, know, you should have a fifth gear I like fifth gear, I use fifth gear quite a bit. <laughs> so whilst we've got it in this state, we're just going to go through and do loads of other bits and pieces as well. That need doing. Um, so I'm hoping the fellas um, next door is going to be around tomorrow so I can borrow their endoscope. But if we have the sump off, we should be able to have a look at the gearbox and try and find out what the problem is with fifth gear. Um, I think it's going to be something like worn dogs on fifth gear on either the input or output shaft. I don't think it's going to be a bent selector fault because I think that would affect getting into sixth as well, but I don't know. I'll need to see it. Um, Matt was saying it could be like worn ramps on the selector drum or a bent selector fork, or it could be teeth missing off one, you know, one of the gears. I mean, it sort of feels like that, but it, you know, until we get in there and have a look, we just don't know. Um, so whilst I've got it down to its undies, we're going to be doing that as well. And even if that wasn't an issue, and I didn't have to do any of that, the bike would be coming off the road. I'll show you a picture why. <laughs> this bike has been sat on the ramp for like two days. That's a big puddle of oil, and it's basically weeping out of the seals. So originally, when I put the bike on the road, it was just like the tiniest little smear of oil coming up on the stanchions, and I mean tiny. Um, you know, I could go out and do 20 miles and check the forks, and there was a little tiny smear there, um, but not, you know, and there was nothing down the fork leg, there was not, you know, it was pretty clean and sweet. Um, however, now, it's just starting to pee out. And it's just because the forks are getting used, basically. Um, it sat there for ages. I've not done seals and bushes and all that other stuff on it. And just with it being used, um, you know, obviously everything is starting to leak. There is a tiny little bit of pitting on the fork stanchions. Um, so it could be that that's eating the seals. I don't really know, but the fork's definitely stripping and sorting out. We polish up the stanchions to get them all nice and smooth and blah, blah, blah. Um, I don't think it's it's the pitting on the on the stanchions that's eating stuff, but you know we'll have to wait and see. So anyway, the bike would be coming off for that reason alone anyway, because if you get oil on your disc or your caliper or your pads, that's it. You just lost your braking, and that would seriously put a dink in your day. But you know, I sort of expected there to be a few issues like this, if I'm honest, because this hasn't been a nut and bolt rebuild. It's just been a case of build up what was what was there. And if something obviously needed servicing because it wasn't working right, then it's been serviced and it's been sorted. You know, I mean, the clutch is fine. You know, all the calipers and brakes and all that stuff is fine. You know, it's all, it's not an issue. Um, it's stuff like this, which we didn't touch this at all. We just bolted it back on and connected it. That was it. But there's obviously an issue with it. So there's going to be stuff like this. So if you've got your own project on the go and it's of a you know, similar kind of ilk to this where you're just reassembling a really old thing and fixing it as you go, you're going to run into this stuff. It's no great surprise. Um, so anyway, I'm going to be back in again tomorrow. This is just a little one, but I did want to let you know what the problems were that I found and what I'm going to do to fix it so you get the gist of what's coming up. I want to go through and get all of this lot done because I do want to get back on ASBO. Um, once I've you know, sorted all this on, it's all back together again. I will be going up and seeing Steve-O because I want to get that 520 set up um, so I can try it on Asbo and see what I've got to do to modify the frame. Um, but I think you know, the, the problems that we're looking at here aren't really massive ones. The only biggie is fifth gear because if it is what I think it's going to be, that's going to be a case of split the cases. So I'm just not going to have a fifth gear for a bit until I decide what I'm going to do with it. But there you go. So that's what the problems are. That's what I'm doing to sort them out. And it's going to keep me busy for a few days. Meanwhile, I'm back in the van. <laughs> but anyway, 
That's where I'm going to leave it for this one. Thank you ever so much for watching. Do hope you're well and staying safe. We'll see you on the next one. Layers! <laughs>